Max, thanks for coming on the podcast, buddy. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, good, mate. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming on. Um, we obviously had a chat with, uh, with Justin a little while back, um, which was a really fun conversation for us. And we know that you do a bit of training with him as well. So I guess uh, we're quite keen to find out a little bit more about your sort of training background or where you started and obviously talk us through your journey of judo into wrestling and now more recently into jiu-jitsu as well. Yeah, so I started judo 1999, Chicago, Illinois, um, in a small dojo called Menominee Judo. <laughs> um, we use like gymnastics mats that we would like pull a canvas tarp over so still back in like the canvas tarp days, there was a couple yeah, nice. of dojos I used like, man, it was like a staff machine, um, <laughs> that canvas tarp, so hard to wash. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's where I started judo. Um, then pretty much got my black belt from that same establishment, Menominee Judo. Um, then started wrestling in high school, got pretty good at wrestling, won a couple state championships in Illinois got offers for D1 scholarship for wrestling, ended up taking one to Cal Poly, wrestled there for two years. And then I decided that I wanna do judo again. So transferred from wrestling back to judo, joined the Olympic Training Center in San Jose, got back on the scene, won a judo national title and started my 2016 Olympic run. And uh, unfortunately, did not go my way, um, you know, had some bumps and hiccups around, along the road. Um, but I got chosen to be an Olympic training partner. So I got to spend a month in Rio um, just yeah, practicing. Um, yeah, it was kind of cool, like the Olympic experience without the pressure of competing. Yeah, that um, must be so, quite nice, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a month in Rio with just Team USA. Yeah, it wasn't bad. What is a, a sort of judo trainer or an Olympic training partner make? So I, so I saw that, I think, when I was reading up on, on what you'd done, but I wasn't quite sure what that meant exactly. Um, so, yeah, so the Olympic training partner pretty much does the practices leading up to Olympics. So, you know, the Olympians don't really want to take falls. So when it's time to practice, they have to have someone to throw, like, I don't know, a thousand times. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you definitely you come back. You come back black and blue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I um, yeah, I got thrown off the mat once by Travis Stevens, and thought I broke my leg. Oh, mate, was it worth it though? Yeah, yeah. No, totally worth <laughs> it. Super fun experience. <laughs> yeah, I I've taken harder that. falls for less. Yeah, yeah. Was that the first time you've been in Rio? First time in Brazil. Yeah, first time yeah. in Rio. Yeah, how did you find it? Um, I mean, beautiful city. Uh, it's kind of, I kind of want to go back to see what it's like without the Olympics going on because the Olympics is just a huge thing. And the Rio Olympics was kind of polarizing for the people. Um, some of the people really enjoyed having the Olympics there and others really saw it as a drain on the economy. Most cities that host the Olympics actually come up in a net negative as far as money they spend hosting the events and the money they earn back in the tourism. So it's kind of a polar, it was a polarizing event in Rio. So I'd like to go back and see Rio without the Olympics going on. Hey guys, just letting you know that we recently launched our new Everyday Black Belt membership on Patreon. This gives you access to our exclusive community where together we decide what future guests we're gonna have on the podcast and what questions we're gonna ask them. You also get exclusive content as well as early ad-free access to all of our episodes. So if you love what we do, don't spend 10 years getting a black belt. For the price of a coffee a month, get one now. It helps us, it supports the channel, and it helps us bring you better guests. And, and did you actually get much downtime? Did you get to sort of go to any clubs or like check out Copacabana or anything? Or was it literally just training and, and sort of in and out? Yeah, it was uh, mostly just training, hanging out with the team, watching. Like we watched every single day of the judo competition. So you know, going, watching full days of tournaments, um, you know, being there to help warm up and uh, help the athletes cut weight when they need. Um, yeah, so it was really just, you know, taking on a supportive role. So still there to do a job. And how did the team do in that particular Olympics? We did, uh, we did great. Um, we had Kayla Harrison, who won a gold, her second gold. Um, yeah, amazing to watch. And then we had uh, Travis Stevens get a silver. And uh, that's probably the best 
Olympics we've ever had as far as like outcome. So yeah, Travis did really well. He utilized a lot of his jujitsu that he had really, you know, brought over. Um, I think he won on the ground every single time. Lots of chokes. How was that kind of um, perceived by the sort of the judo community at the Olympics where someone maybe isn't hitting nippons and they're actually using chokes and, and sort of submission techniques to get the win? Is it frowned upon or is it just, you know, it's essentially the same thing? I think it's essentially the same thing. Um, judo has actually made a push within my lifetime to allow more time on the ground. So the theory in judo is forward progression. If your forward progress gets halted, they're going to stand you back up. And previously they would take like one move getting stopped to stand you back up. But now they'll like, oh, your first move got stopped. Well, do you have a second or third one ready to go where like you can try again and again? And then maybe if you fail the third time, they'll be like, okay, yeah, come on back up. It's interesting because we've seen a bit of a, I guess, a change with judo as well with other rule sets where obviously for you doing wrestling, obviously I think some of the wrestling and the, the, the grabbing of the legs got removed, right? Yeah, that was, um, man, that changed judo for me. Like I'll never look at the sport the same. Um, yeah, it's a really sad moment in my life when that happened. Um, yeah, still kind of weighs heavy on me, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and, and given your kind of wrestling background, did you feel that, that does that has that hindered your, I guess, your performance in judo under the current rule set now that you can't do that given your wrestling background as well, do you think? Yeah, so I, I did start in judo, um, but I did like lean more towards the hybrid moves, um, kataguruma, which, you know, in wrestling is a fireman's, um, teguruma, which is like a hand wheel. So I did like some of those hand techniques um, that were like hand to leg, like a kochigari to an ankle pick. Um, it's kind of like dirty judo a little bit, but it's something that's, you know, really lended itself to me. So when they took those out, there was like a huge talk in the USA community of like whether I would not, whether I would be able to compete at the level I did before. And how, how were your performances once that got removed? It was it was difficult for me. Um, they took away like half my techniques. Um, That's fucking so tough. That's it was rough going in an adjustment period. Yeah, but you know, I still, I still did my thing. I still did well. So, mate, take us right the right the way back to the beginning. So, you said you started judo as a, as a child. Um, so, tell us about how you kind of walked into the, the sort of judo dojo for the first time, and and what what you remember of that experience. Uh, yeah. So. Growing up in inner city Chicago can get a little bit rough. So <laughs> my parents were like, he's probably going to be a small kid. Neither of us are very big. So we want him to know how to defend himself. And my godfather kind of knew about like some combat sports and asked my dad, well, do you want him to hit someone in the face or do you just want him to take him down? And my dad was like, ooh, I don't really want him hitting someone. So... Maybe just like take him down. And he's like, cool, put him in judo. Um, so put me in judo. And I think my first class, I joined with my best friend and they taught me no Soto Gari. And I Soto Gari'd my friend so hard that I probably gave him a concussion. Um, and we're like six. And he never came back. <laughs> and I was really upset because I was my friend. And I wanted to do judo with him, but he never came back after that. Oh, no. Was that, did you still speak to the kid? Was that because he just, he was so horrified? Or was that his parents saying this is absolutely wrong? Or do you know what, do you know, do you know why he didn't come back? Yeah, we were still friends after that. He just did not like judo. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My coach was like, wow, that was really good, but don't do it like that again. <laughs> Awesome. And then uh, when did you start competing? Yeah, so I started competing at six. Um, Jesus. Yeah, all the, all the tournaments as a little kid. Yeah, my parents would put me in my age and weight, the weight above me, the age above me, and then the weight and age above me. So there were days where I was doing like four different brackets as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been fun. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> So, so was, was that your parents that were that keen or was that you that was that keen for them to do that? Um, I, I think that was mainly my dad. My dad really wanted to, you know, see how 
hard he could push me. Was your dad a, a, a sort of martial artist or did he have a combat background or was he just enjoying living vicariously through you and pushing you hard? <laughs> uh, he does have his judo black belt now, um, okay, nice. but he got his black belt after I did. So um, he was water polo and baseball. Those were his sports. Um, but when he put me in judo, he started trying to coach me. And, you know, being a kid, I was like, it's not that easy. You, you should try it. And he was like, you know what? I will. Um, so I stepped on the mat and eventually ended up getting his black belt in judo. Yeah, that's awesome. What age did he start, you know? I think he started at 33. That's good going. Hey, it's not yeah. wrong with starting at 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Max, I tried my kid who's four at judo and he just couldn't quite like get his head around it at that age, I found, because... I guess he spends, you know, half of his life being told that he can't put hands on people and, and push people. I remember how confused he looked the first time when I was encouraging him to push somebody over. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, being like a young judoka yourself and, and possibly coaching youngsters, I mean, what, what, what is it that kind of attracts young kids to, to keep them in judo, do you find? I think... Um camaraderie at a young age if you're going to have young people doing judo you almost have to have like an in-between generation coaching them so you know how much technical coaching does a four-year-old actually need you know so having maybe a nine-year-old who has been with you for a while stepping into that role and helping out with that class and this is like another kid that that kid is like oh so we're this kid says it's okay and he's another kid it's not just this adult telling me to do this thing that i've been told not to do before so when you see those other kids doing it and the other kids encouraging you like as a youngster to do it i think that really helps the the status quo mm -hmm. yeah it's a good shout and i think you won the did you win at the youth of the olympics did i see yeah yeah, yeah. Youth olympics in singapore what age were you when you did that, when you did that? Um, I was 17. I think that's an under 19 tournament okay. or under 18. I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah. So, so as, as a prior to that, as, as a sort of maybe sort of, you know, before your teens, um, and earlier teens, like what was the, the biggest accolade or biggest, uh, victory that you had thinking back? Um, before that, I would say like, you know, I had won, uh, like a Pan American, like a junior Pan Ams. Um, so winning like the Pan Ams was pretty good. Um, before that, also like a Cadet Worlds. So that's a, that's your under 15, like 15 and under World Championships. So I got fifth at the Cadet Worlds. Um, a couple state, uh, my sophomore year in high school, I won a state championship, which was pretty big deal in the States. Um, yeah, so those were probably some of my larger accolades and then, you know, a bunch of national titles, um, from a young age on. And then t tell us about the, uh, the sort of Olympic win. So like how, how long were you working toward that? And like how much of a, of a big deal was that for you at the time? Um, so that was the first ever youth Olympic games. Mm, okay. Um, so it was really like this brand new thing on the scene that nobody had really encountered before and the qualification for it. Like no one actually knew beforehand what the qualification was or how they would select the team members. So they selected the youth Olympic team. Um, every country could only send two judo athletes for every weight. So you just picked your best male and your best female and you sent them across. Um, so it's relatively small divisions. Um, the brackets were fairly small. I think I had um, four wins in the whole tournament to to get gold um but the people who performed the best at the cadet worlds were selected to go on to the youth olympics so the previous year i got fifth at the cadet worlds which at the time was like the best result uh, a u.s player had ever pulled um so i and a, a girl named caitlin were selected to go to the youth olympics and we both actually won um so we both 
were able to pull off gold in our respective divisions. I think I beat North Korea in the finals. And I think Caitlin beat Russia, if I'm not mistaken. So two so cool, US adversaries that, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, mate. And and as a as a youth uh, player, is, is there any any ch- any difference in the rule set, any techniques that are kind of off limits, or is it sort of as you would see in the in the adults? At the Cadet Worlds, there's no arm bars. Okay. So in judo, there's like this interesting juxtaposition where they you have to understand the repercussions of your actions before you're allowed to use submissions. So in judo, thirteen is the age for chokes. And 16 is the age for arm bars. Um, so uh, at the Cadet Worlds, no arm bars, only chokes. But at the Youth Olympics, it's, uh, you know, no holds barred. Everything just like the adult rules. Yeah, nice. And then you said you, you kind of, did you say you stopped judo for a period to go into wrestling? I was doing both simultaneously. And okay. my life was just a mess. Um, <laughs> uh you know, I would like wake up, go to school. After school, you have wrestling practice from like uh, three to five. I would go home, eat, try and do some homework, and then judo practice from eight to 10 p.m. And then just all over That's again. Fucking crazy. You must have been shattered. Yeah. How did you, how long did you sustain that amount of training in for, mate? Like four years. <laughs> Fuck it out. I feel guilty sending Jack to football if he doesn't want to. <laughs> when you started wrestling, was it was it to to kind of improve your judo or did you see something in wrestling that you just enjoyed more? Um, no. So I, I come from a lower socioeconomic family and mm-hmm. in America, college is really expensive. So I kind of saw it as my route to get a college education. Um, so that was like how I like worked on getting scholarship. Oh, wow. That's cool, isn't it? Did it work? Did you get a scholarship and stuff? You said, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I got a full ride. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I love that about the States. We don't really have that. We, we we do a little, but not so much in the in the UK. I think it's awesome that they, they kind of support the education of, of, of kids through sport. I think it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It really gives people like a, a way out for sure. Yeah, and, and for you then, mate, was that was that the, the, the kind of underlying motivation or was there was it succeeding at the sport as well? Was it like a combination of things or what was, if you had to pick out one thing that really motivated you to keep pushing, doing those long days for four years and obviously performing at a very high level, what would it have been? Um, Definitely love of the sport. Um, I love grappling. I see it as like the original form of play. Like when you see animals as cubs and stuff, what do they do? They like simulate fighting, they wrestle around. So I like really resonate with the grappling arts. So, um, really just really enjoyed the grappling arts my first year wrestling i didn't know if i was going to be able to do it again um that was so tough making that transition my first match um i you wear a singlet in wrestling so my first match i went out and i was wearing my singlet backwards i had no (laughs) idea how to start the match i was just like meandering around the mat and the referee's like get over here put your foot on the line shake his hand are you ready when i say go we're gonna go (laughs) <laughs> um, and then I threw him to his back and pinned him in 30 seconds. Um, nice. But <laughs> just like a complete goof about it. Just had no idea what was going on. Um, so learning the rules and all that was very tough. Mm. So for, for, for the, uh, the naive Brits who don't wrestle too much and maybe some of our audience who aren't familiar with, with judo or wrestling, like what are the key differences between the wrestling? Was it folk style that you did? In the US? Oh, uh, yeah, folk style. Yeah. So, what's the key difference between folk style wrestling and, and judo? Takedowns are scored differently. Um, in judo, it's all about getting their back to touch. Mm-hmm. When wrestling, it's just controlling them to the ground and remaining in the top position. So, like someone like sh- taking a shot on my leg and just like taking me down. In judo, if you turn to your stomach, it's no points. Where in wrestling, if you turn to your stomach, they're scoring. But some of the similarities are pinning. In judo, you can pin. So if you hold side control, north, south, mount, or like anything in between those um, for 20 seconds, that's a victory. Mm -hmm. In wrestling, you have to do it with 
both shoulder blades touching, but you can be in guard and do it. Not that that's advisable. That's kind of difficult <laughs> um, to hold shoulder blades down in guard. Um, but yeah, so like I pinned everyone my freshman year. I actually like set my own record for amount of pins in a single season my first year and I wasn't able to break it again. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Um, I think I had like 36 pins out of 45 matches. That's pretty <laughs> fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, techniques from judo that you're not allowed to use in wrestling, like can you like use foot sweeps and that type of thing or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can use like wrestling the only thing you're not allowed to do is slam people. And this is kind of like a subjective thing. <laughs> okay. Um, like what is a slam and what's just like you threw him pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never gotten called for slams though. I think like lack of control really dictates what a slam is. Sure. And like intention behind it. And my intention was always to take them down hard, but not to hurt them along the way. All other takedowns are allowed. Okay. So yeah, when you said about the slamming thing, then I, I was thinking, I was surprised because I'd almost associate wrestling with slamming. <laughs> what, suplex? <laughs> well, yeah, you know what I mean? But again, like you say, it's, I guess it's defining what a, what a slam is. So I guess, is, is, it, is it, you know, sort of picking someone up and then throwing them to the ground without maintaining control, as you say? Is that what a slam's defined as, like in the rule set? Could you explain it? So I'm not sure about like the exact wording of, like what a slam is. I've never actually read the wrestling rule book as like surprising as that is. Um, but from my understanding, it is one, one thing is when both feet leave the ground, like if you're going to suplex someone and you jump beforehand uh, okay. and both feet leave the ground and you guys are both in the air and you're slamming them down. Right. Um, yeah. There's other like things that are illegal, like a trap arm map return, um, so you can't map return to the same side if you have a body lock with that arm inside, um, because they don't have a hand to post to protect their head. Okay. Um, which in jujitsu, it's still allowed, but, um, yeah, it's a very devastating move. Trap arm map return. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what that is, mate. Uh, it's when you have a rear body lock standing. Yeah. And when you have that body lock, you have one of their arms inside your body lock. Yeah. So, and if you pick them up and return them to that side, their arm is stuck in there and they'll just basically land right here yeah, on okay. the side of their head. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. And when you say a mat return, is that literally picking them up and returning them back to the floor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You right. pretty much like pick them up and like turn them sideways yeah, yeah, and yeah. return them down to like a turtle position. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean now. Yeah, I just wasn't familiar with the terminology. Okay, interesting. And then, I guess thinking about like like I guess judo grips, wrestling, obviously, and the the the, the no gi element to to that grappling. As like a, judo, a judoka, and I guess this applies to to your current grappling as well. But what what are your kind of preferred grips? Like if you're tying up with somebody, um, and like rolling now, what would you typically go for as your kind of a game from a gripping perspective? If there was no gi. Yeah, so my no gi a game is an overhook. Um, so I, I like to give up the underhook and take the overhook position. Um, it really lends itself to some really good systems that I have. So I know it's fairly unpopular opinion to go for an overhook over the underhook, uh, especially in wrestling. Um, but my, my a game is typically an overhook and then... Um, yeah, I don't care if they have head position. I don't care if they have my wrist. As long as I have that overhook, I'm fairly comfortable. <laughs> That's really cool, yeah. And then what would you typically look to hit from that position? So I have a fireman's from that position. Um, I have a Kochi ankle pick, Uchimata, um, a technique I call the arsonist. Um, yeah, a reverse <laughs> arm spin. Um, you have like front uchi or you have like uchimata to front headlock you have like a, a lot of really great options okay what did you call it the arsonist is it because it's just fire <laughs> <laughs> so it's um it's actually something i've been struggling to name this forever and my fiance actually came up with the name which god bless her um 
it's a it's a front side fireman's. So when you're doing a fireman's, you typically put your head through to the back side and almost put yourself in a crucifix. So rather than putting your head on the back side and putting yourself in a crucifix, you put your head in the chest. And um the hands work the same like a fireman's, um, but you don't give up back exposure. So the risk of putting yourself in a crucifix or getting countered is much less. Just trying to work out of my head. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking about the name as well. I think that's quite clever. It's a good name. That is good. Awesome. And then you obviously wrestled through for high school and then you said you kind of then went back to more judo. And then obviously you mentioned at the beginning that you had a bit of a, uh, I guess, a run at the Olympics. So talk to us about the transition, I guess, back to, to judo. Um, and then obviously what that, what that run up to 2016 looked like for you. And then you mentioned, obviously it didn't work out. Tell us why. Yeah. So, um, my wrestling career kind of left me a little damaged. Um, I heard, had my first surgery at 16. Um, so yeah, I had shoulder surgery at 16, other shoulder surgery at 19 and then 20, I, um, I had a full tear of my bicep femoris. So my left hamstring is still torn. I don't have a hamstring, like my main hamstring. I still have the two accessories, but I don't have my like bicep on my leg, um, on my left side. So all of that happened and I was like, man, wrestling, I'm just, I keep getting hurt. It's just not working out for me. And I was like, you know, I never really got that bad hurt in judo. Let me give that a run. Um, so yeah, going back to judo was tough. Um, it was right after I tore my hamstring. I quit wrestling. I was like, I'm going back to judo. So I was honestly like, I had like a psychosomatic limp um, from like not using crutches properly and like not working on regaining my gait. Um, so I was kind of like a, a shell of the person I was um, going back into judo and I had to work really hard to try to become like a, a judoka again. I came in and I was weighing like 180 pounds um, and my fighting weight's 145. So um, yeah, I was just yeah, like way overweight, limping, just like not really like people would be like, this is the guy you brought onto the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. So, uh, That's yeah, crazy. it was crazy. Um, but, you know, I worked hard, um, got back into it, started training and uh, yeah, had my stint at the San Jose Olympic Training Center um, that ended up not really working out for me either. Um, I couldn't really keep up financially to keep that, like it's in San Jose, California, which is in the Bay, very expensive place to live. And I wasn't necessarily receiving the support I needed to compete out there. It definitely aided in me losing weight, but you know, that was not from, you know, proper dieting. It's just, I wasn't really eating. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I ended up moving back to Chicago, uh, rejoining my original gym, Menominee Judo, um, where my coach, you know, Brett Wolf gave me the support I needed and, um, you know, took me to the national championship. And he's like, hey, if you want to make Olympic running, you need to win this tournament. Like, because like some hiccups at the beginning of the journey with like San Jose State and that I was starting my Olympic run late. I was like a year later than I needed to start. Most people had already been working at it for a year and I was like just starting. Um, so won the tournament I needed to win, um, the national championship, I got the F-145 and then started traveling, um, competing across the world to try and gain points to qualify because it's a, it's a qualification point system. So it's kind of like who has enough money to travel around to all these tournaments to win. Um, so it's a very expensive ordeal to try to make an Olympic team in judo because there is no Olympic trials. You can't just like win some local tournaments and there are zero tournaments within the U S or Canada that really like significantly contribute to that. So you pretty much have to go to Asia or like, uh, Europe to really gain those points. Um, so very expensive ordeal, but 
I started, you know, pulling some results, doing okay. Ended up breaking my ankle in Mauritius. So that put me out for a little bit. Um, and then at the Pan Am Games, Pan Am Championships, it was like my last real shot to like get enough points to potentially qualify. Like I pretty much had to win that tournament. And uh, first round, got a pretty bad concussion. Um, and that was pretty much it. So, you know, kind of just like a, a run of bad luck. But, you know, it is what it is. Everyone shoots their shots. Not everyone's going to make it. But, you know, I did my best. Yeah, mate, I think all things considered, mate, I think you did pretty well. So well done, mate. It's also an awesome effort. Let's go back to those injuries, mate, because they're, they're pretty mm -hmm. substantial. Um, I guess the first question that I've got is, is why do you think wrestling's so much harder on the body than judo? Because they both look fucking brutal to me, to be honest. I think my body over like my entire lifetime became pretty accustomed to judo. And then moving to wrestling, I didn't really have a coach who understood how to transition me over. Like I never really had a wrestling coach who understood judo. So like I would go out and hit like an uchimata on someone and they'll be like my wrestling coach would literally yell do that thing again and it's like, <laughs> yes exactly like i'll yeah i'll do the thing that i know how to do and it's called uchimata but yeah i'll do it <laughs> again um so i think improper loading from my coaches um obviously like you know the way people is trained has advanced so much even within like our lifetime. And um, so I think improper loading from coaches was a big one. Um, my first injury, I was a high school freshman. So I was 14 years old and they put me in a college room um, of a school that was recruiting me. And they had me face like one of their like national medalists. And I got hurt, dude hurt me. Um, so looking back at that situation, it's like, maybe like my coach should not have put me in that situation where like, I'm facing someone, this guy, he's like 2021, 20, like one of the best in the country. And, um, like he doesn't want to get like embarrassed by a 14 year old kid. And I have the pressure to perform in front of these recruiters. So I go out, I take him down once. He doesn't like that. And the next time I go to take him down, he just rips my arm off. And I'm like, okay, cool. Time for surgery. <laughs> Fuck it out. So, yeah, I think like part of it is like, you know, not being loaded correctly. And like, you know, I think uh, that that's definitely a contributing thing. Mm. Yeah, no, I'd say so, mate. But um, so, the, so the, the, the hamstring injury that you had, so that was a, a full rupture then, you say? Mm -hmm. So that, that came off. How did that happen? Uh, I was wrestling in a tournament in Las Vegas, the Cliff Keen Invitational. It's a pretty big college, like D1 tournament. Um, yeah, so happened. First day, I went, I think, two and one, and I lost in the quarters to someone I had previously beat. And then the next morning, it was just a complete like mess. Like, um, my coach like missed weigh-ins, didn't show up. Um, <laughs> like in wrestling, you have to shave or previously you had to shave every day. Like you couldn't have stubble on the mat. Um, so it's like just your face or everywhere, you, just your face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come in bold, like just yeah. baby oiled up, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so like, I shaved the day before, but the referee looked at me, felt my face, and he's like, you got to go shave again. So I'm like running around trying to find a razor, just wait in for the second day in a row, can't find my coach. Um, my whole team got eliminated before that, so I was the only guy from my team who actually showed up, so had no one to warm up with. Um, and then first match out, I was doing good, coach shows up. He makes a bad call. I end up getting hurt. Um, I actually got to like banana splitted. 
you know, bananas, but it's like oh, across. Yeah, he, like, he, yeah, he's, that's, that's, a fa- that's a favorite of mine, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but rather than like rolling me and then submitting me, I was like in a tripod position. Mm-hmm. And they just pulled my leg out from under me. Ooh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just, uh, yeah, that was that. Why didn't you have that um, reattached out of interest? Because you were quite young still, right? Yeah, but it wasn't off like either insertion point. Okay. It was like through the belly. Oh, shit. Oh, oh man. No. I don't have even ever heard of that. No. Thing. Yeah. So okay. um, I was pretty much told like if it was off the insertion, they would definitely reattach it. Yeah, but yeah. Since it was through the center, they're like, it's pretty much sewing hamburger meat back together. And it's going to be low quality and you're probably going to tear it again. So they're yeah. like, this is something you just have to live with from now on. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Mate, I, I don't think I've... I've never heard of that. No, it's always that usually either, either end, isn't it? Yeah, shit. And yeah. obviously, yeah, that, that's going to affect your performance massively, mate. So as I said, I mean, I think doing what you did after that is, is pretty incredible, mate. So good effort. I mean, how, how did that... Like, when did you next compete after that injury? Um, it was probably two years later. Okay. Um, took took me a while to come back from that one. Um, I used to put in a lot of road work. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, at least once a week, I was doing 10 miles and then, like, three miles, like, a couple times a week um, on top of lifting and training. And after that, um, I remember it was, like, a very pivotal point in my life where I realized, like, I couldn't run a mile. Like... <sighs> I still struggle to run a mile. Um, So I I have a bike, really love my bike. So I ride the bike now, like road bike. Um, So that's how I get my like cardio in. But yeah, when I realized that I couldn't run anymore, it was like, uh, it was a pretty tough moment for me. Um, And I realized like I would have to change like everything if I wanted to come back to compete. And I didn't know if it was going to work. Like I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back, but I was... You know, I was just going to try. I want to ask how where your head was at, mate, for a period because, you know, I've had a few sort of injuries, but I was never competing at your level. Um, but even just being out from training for me was would put me in a real dark place. And I did a, I did a degree um, around sort of the injuries and and rehabilitation, and we covered a psychology. And I know from that module that you know the, the people when they get injured and it's a severe injury that puts them out of their sport you know, they go through like a whole host of emotions. I mean, what were those two years like for you kind of mentally, mate? Are you able to talk about that? Um, Yeah, it was really difficult. Um, You know, once I wasn't able to perform like I was, um, going on recruiting trips and trying to get recruited to teams, like I had to almost like sell them a sale of false goods. And they're like, you're good. I'm like, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. Um, I like... I couldn't tell them I couldn't use my left leg. Like no, no coach would touch me. Um, so it was really difficult to try to, you know, like put on like a face and be like, I'm coming back. Like it's all good. Um, so, you know, on that side, it was difficult. And there were some things that happened that just like really discouraged me. Like, you know, cause like once I joined the team, they'd be like, okay, team run. And I'm like, fuck, can't cannot do that um and like i would try and like you know the whole team just like watches me like limp around um so really difficult but then we get on the mat and i can still do my thing on the mat like even with one leg like i'm still pretty good on the mat i can't i still can't really stand on my left leg well um so it took away like that side of attacks for me i'm an ambidextrous fighter so i switch stances a lot and i switch sides a lot but like not being able to stand on my left leg really has hindered me. Um, since that injury, I've also torn my ACL and my meniscus twice. Um, and the ankle break was also on that leg after the hamstring injury. Um, <laughs> Fucking hell. So that That's left wild. leg is trashed, like absolutely trashed. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. So much in it. There's so many injuries. You hit every, every guy we speak to who's involved in wrestling or judo, their legs are fucked. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Every single yeah. guy we talk to, their legs are fucked. Yeah. Knees are fucked, hamstrings, whatever. 
Yeah. So were you ambidextrous before the injury and that kind of just facilitated you still being able to perform at some sort of level? Or is that like a, a new thing you had to learn to just work around this this leg that was pretty much unusable for you? Um, I was ambidextrous before the injury. So I was taught judo right-handed, but yeah. I'm a true lefty. Okay. So like maybe five years into doing judo, my coach saw me like right with my left hand and he's like, you're a lefty. And I was like, yeah. He's like, why didn't you tell me? I was like, you didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, do judo left-handed. So I started doing judo left-handed. Yeah. Um, but that like five year base of learning right-handed techniques, like still, if I want to show some techniques, it feels better to show it on my right side because that's how I learned it. And that's how I practiced it. But when it's like go time, usually I default to left. So maybe the obvious question, I think for us sat here as jujitsu practitioners, is why the hell did you just not resort to bum scooting in jiu-jitsu and, and do that instead? <laughs> <laughs> like what, why the dirty that? guard pillar. Yeah. I mean, what was your, were you aware of like Brazilian jiu-jitsu as, as a competitive sport at this time? Or did you just scoff at it because they're bum scooters? What, did, what, did you, what were your thoughts at the time? Were you aware of it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was aware of jiu-jitsu. Um, I would say like my knowledge of jiu-jitsu wasn't that great, but I knew that there were tough people within the sport and I would use it as a, like a method of cross training because in judo, I always liked the ground game as well. So my like statistics, half my matches I won on my feet and half my matches I won on the ground and a hundred percent of my matches ended before time expired. Nice. So I'm like, total live by the sword die by the sword type of guy yeah. <laughs> like i'm a winner you're gonna win um but it's gonna be interesting mm -hmm. um but yeah i use jujitsu as like a method of cross training um so uh valco jujitsu in chicago is one place i would go and cross train some tough guys there um it's funny like i think that was my first time rolling with a uh, wojek um he's going to adcc this year um he was a brown belt at the time but that was my first time rolling with him. So there were some good guys in the room. Um, but yeah, um, always respected it. Really tough guys, really good rounds, great cardio. And of course, like a little bit less impact than, you know, mm. just standing and banging in judo. Yeah. So I guess like if you had an awareness of it, it just brings me back to that question again. Obviously, you're in that dark place. You, mm -hmm. You've had two years out and somehow you pull yourself out of that place and, and, and get back to judo. I imagine at some point you may have considered quitting and not doing that. Um, yeah. and, and did you ever think about that as an option? I actually did quit. Um, I quit and I was like kind of homeless, kind of couch surfing, just like, you know, sleeping wherever. Um, and then I was in Chicago and then my coach, my old coach, like just saw me on the street. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, absolutely nothing. He's like, you in shape? I was like, oh, absolutely not. He's like, you training? <laughs> I was like, no, not at all. And he was like, um, the national tournament is in two months. I want you to go. And he's like, would you going to come by the club and start training again? And like, I was just like, yeah yeah like let's uh, I'll, I'll give it a go like if someone's willing to take a chance on me like I, I'll, I'll go i'll do it um i was like i'm gonna need some time to pass that drug test but <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah yeah no it was a it was not a good time in my life but you know i got back in the gym um lost the weight got down to my like fighting weight and uh won the tournament so kind of a crazy run that's wild, isn't it, to be able to do that? Yeah, yeah. So, so really, it was that chance encounter that I guess got you back on the straight and narrow and back into training. Then, yeah, yeah. He just saw me on the street. He's like, "Let me buy you some food." Shit, and I was man. like, "Yeah, okay." So you was like really like homeless on drugs, just down and out at that point. Um, I was like kind of crashing on my family's couch. I like I grew up in like a two bedroom apartment with a family of five. So I didn't like when I, I was the first guy, like I, I left the house pretty young. Like I wasn't really spending much time at home. Um, like the, love my family, awesome people. You know, I still go back and visit them all the time. Um, 
but yeah, I, I just, you know, when you're sleeping on a couch, it's just like, you know, you're sleeping on the couch. Is it like yeah. really your home? Um, but yeah, suitcase, couch, um, and yeah, just, uh, you know, making my way around, didn't have a job, didn't have any prospects, not really doing anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, except for drugs, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And then, uh, he really saw me and he was like, yeah, let me, let me get you some food. Let me say mm. what's up. And, uh, yeah, that. got me back into it. Yeah, man. Shit. So, so if you hadn't had that encounter, like you might very well still be in that situation or something worse, you think? Yeah, probably. I'm, my whole family works in the service industry okay. um, or worked. Mo all the kids have got college degrees now and we all work different jobs, but my parents still work in the service industry. So I probably would have just gone into the service industry. Yeah, um, yeah so kind of changed my trajectory there. So tell us about the... Um the, the first time in jiu-jitsu then so you said you've been doing it for about three years now um so when did you decide to to give that a go and, and start training sort of more regularly doing jiu-jitsu yeah so i i'd kind of like trained jiu-jitsu sporadically and like always like done rounds with jiu-jitsu guys um but i wore a white belt for the entire time and <laughs> sandbagging yeah i uh, yeah, sandbagging. <laughs> 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 and I would go to different gyms and, you know, have really good rounds with upper belts. And like the coach would be like, Hey, look, I, I want to bring you on, join the squad. I'm going to put you at this belt. And I just be like, no, I'm doing judo. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not ready to focus on something new. Um, and then once my like collegiate career was over in wrestling, once my judo was done, I was like, okay, um, let's, uh, let's just start something new. So I, uh, I found my way to San Diego. Um, so I graduated, I went back to school a second time and I actually ended up wrestling again. Um, after <laughs> just a I of the punish, missed punish my Olympic way, judo run. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. So I missed my Olympic run and then I was ready to go for the next cycle, the next quad. And then, um, an old friend and an old colleague, Jason Welsh, just got accepted as the, or like, um, he got the job as the head coach of the San Francisco state wrestling team. And he called me up and he's like, do you have any eligibility left? Like, uh, you have to have eligibility to wrestle in college. And I was like, I don't know, sent him my transcripts. Um, my first go at college, I didn't graduate, um, send my transcripts and he's like, yeah, you got three years, come wrestle for me. And at this point, like, I was like, you know, maybe I should probably get educated. Like my body's not doing so hot. I should probably get a degree. Um, so I went back and I wrestled, um, got my degree in biochemistry. And, uh, once I graduated, um, actually my last two years during COVID, I moved to San Diego. And that's where I linked up with Justin and, um, he got me into jujitsu, um, introduced me to all the guys around. He's been like a, a great mentor for me, um, bringing me in to like clubs and like introducing me to people and, um, you know, making sure I'm safe and I'm protected when I roll. Um, and you know, just like really, uh, you know, welcomed me very warmly to San Diego. Yeah, no, he seems like a, a really good guy. When we spoke to him, we had a really good conversation. And uh, we had uh, Owen Jones, who's um, an under 66 who's competing at ADCC, British lad. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. we, we've, we've had him on previously. And he's, I think, just been out with you guys, perhaps, or out with uh, Jay Flood. I don't know if you were about at the time. Um, but he spoke very highly of him as well. So he seems like a super good guy. So, so that's, are you still based in San Diego now? Are you there sort of full time or do you just drop in? Cause we obviously see you kind of online sort of training with Justin a fair bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still based in San Diego. Um, yeah, it's, I didn't know San Diego was a place I needed to be until I got here. It's kind <laughs> of crazy. Um, San Diego has a huge biotech industry and also an amazing grappling scene and, you know, working in biotech and then also um, you know, being really into the grappling arts, it's really the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. except for the housing prices. 
that that <laughs> would be better. But. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be crazy out there at the moment, isn't it? Housing prices. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Oh, Try and live in London, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. London's pretty yeah, brutal no. as well. It's it's wild. So, what's the plan with jujitsu then? So, you've been doing it for a few years. Are you uh, are you a black belt already or not? No, brown belt. Brown belt, nice. And uh, are you competing in jujitsu? No. Plans to? Um, I always play with the idea, um, but I don't know if it's what's best for me. Um, you know, I'm happy contributing to the sport in other ways. Um, you know, coaching, practicing, being a training partner, supporting the guys who have a better shot than I do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm competitive in the room and I give people tough goes. Um, but, you know, I, my body just isn't what it once was. And I'm sure a bunch of people say that. Um, but, you know, maybe it's a mental aspect for me. I just don't want to be hurt anymore. Um, but, you know, it, I'm not sure if it's what's best for me. It does, it does weigh on you when you have a lot of bad injuries. It does weigh, no matter what anyone says, it's in the back of your mind, isn't it, all the time. There's certain aspects where you're like, I could get thrown here and I don't want to base off that arm or I don't want to push off that leg or all those types of things. And if you're competing, it kind of goes away and then you remember after when you're fucking injured again. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah. No, my last match um, I ever had ended in injury. Um, I, uh, I dislocated my collarbone from my sternoclavicular like joint um so yeah it's still a bit like arthritic in there yeah. but yeah so that was like a new one that i haven't had like just like tearing away that skeletal attachment for the arm it was wild I, I was literally about to say that's another injury i think that's two now that you've said that i've never really come across before <laughs> like a full muscle belly like <laughs> hamstring tear and now uh yeah a, a collarbone dislocation at the sternum yeah, okay, fair enough, mate. I don't blame you. Um, so I guess all things considered now then, you're obviously you know, very familiar with jiu-jitsu, wrestling, judo. We, we had the same conversation with Jay Flo as well, but always interested to, to kind of get your take on it. But if you're starting in grappling and you have a healthy body, I don't know, maybe a, a younger person, um, where, where would you start? Would you still take the route that you took um, or would you maybe sort of suggest a different entry into grappling i think potentially holding off your kid from learning martial arts until they're nine ten might honestly be the way to go putting them in more supplemental less traumatic and maybe this is just my trauma speaking but really making sure that their body forms and develops in like a very positive and beneficial way before you put the miles on them, you know, like very young, I, I was entered into like four or five divisions as a kid. Every weekend they try to give me at least 10 matches. So they really put a lot of miles on my body very young and, you know, it helped me progress very quickly, but you know, did I progress too quickly where my peak was earlier than it should have been? So really trying to think about like timing athletics and, you know, getting a person to be primed for 26, 27, where like 30, 31, they're like, I've accomplished pretty much everything I want to. And by 26, they're like primed and they're ready to go. Like if you start when you're 10, 26 is still 16 years of training, 16 years of experience, right? So giving them like a little bit later a start, but like maybe early putting them in gymnastics and yoga and like having them do like a bunch of interesting like movement and proprioception exercises that will, you know, really benefit them long-term. So maybe holding them off from everything. And then I think judo has, you know, learning how to fall in judo is, differentiating factor from both jujitsu and wrestling so i think learning how to fall first I, I think it's something that should be taught in every school system learning how to fall whether they're grapplers or not um the amount of injuries we see from falling at old age or just throughout the lifetime it's extremely high so if people just knew how to fall properly it would 
greatly diminish that. So yeah. judo for the following aspect at least, and then like pro learning proper force application in judo um, is cool. The gi is nice. It's a good tool. It's much easier to make the transition from the gi to no gi than it is from no gi to gi. Um, so I think judo has like a lot of those beneficial markers where I think judo is a good one, then jujitsu, and then wrestling probably below that. I think wrestling instills a mentality in people. It's really good at instilling a work ethic. Um, there is no easy route to a victory in wrestling. There's no submissions. There's no like touch falls, like epones in judo. You literally have to hold someone on their back, on both shoulder blades down. And that's a very difficult task to accomplish, um, especially when someone can turtle and you can't submit them from turtle. Um, so I think wrestling instills a mentality in people, um, which we, we've seen like dominate in the UFC, right? That work ethic, that mentality, um, it just dominates. So I do enjoy that like mental aspect of wrestling, but it is tough, man, tough. Yeah, I mean, that's a great answer. I think, um, yeah, I think the the point around longevity um, is, is a really interesting one. I mentioned that I tried my kid at judo. He didn't really take to it, so we, we've given up. We've got him doing taekwondo, um, which isn't necessarily a martial art I'd, I'd pick as an adult, but it's great. <laughs> It's great because it, it teaches him, you know, sort of stranger awareness, but, you know, they're, they're just focusing on coordination primarily, um, which is great for him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting point. I think, yeah, it's so true that I think you can just wreck your body. I wish I knew how to break four because when I broke my arm in football, I just didn't know how to fall. I put my arm out straight, snap my, um, snap my humerus. And I wish now, knowing what I know, I would have just broke four. <laughs> Not being a fucking spaz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, good answer. Um, I wanted to ask you earlier when you mentioned uh, Kayla Harrison, how do you think she does in the uh, UFC? Do you think she's, do you think anyone's going to beat her? Ooh, um, so I've trained with her. Um, and she is definitely a specimen, like a physical <laughs> specimen. And her work ethic is ridiculous. Um, so I think the combination of like, being like a specimen as well as work ethic, it's going to be very tough for anyone to beat her. The one thing that I know is difficult for her, and we saw it in her last fight, was that weight cut. Um, that weight cut, it can it can really, you know, like damage you as far as like your ability to sustain hits. Um, so I think if anything's gonna beat her, it's probably gonna be that weight cut. Yeah, no, she looks really tough, mate. And um, but yeah, you're right. She's a, she's a she's a big girl, so uh, it's tough. And how about um, I guess just sort of like ADCC, CJI? Are you a fan? Do you watch sort of grappling much? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watch a lot of grappling, and I work with a lot of those people. Um, mm. Obviously, at Justin's class, like um, we'll have like a bunch of those people, like. Uh, uh, Kyan was just there, Kaiden, um, Owen stops by, PJ's in that class, um, Adam Bradley. Um, yeah, so we, we have like a bunch of those guys kind of around. Um, so yeah, naturally like I want to help them, you know, they're the homies. I want to help them train, get better. So, you know, awesome love the idea of it athletes getting paid um it's something i never really experienced as an athlete um so you know I, i'm just really happy it's happening that way yeah no it seems to be a definitely net positive i think i think obviously it's uh you know it's it's maybe spread the talent across two tournaments at a weekend opposed to just having it all condensed in one but i think both independently are looking at really good competition so i think both are going to be awesome i'll definitely have both on side by side i think all weekend. <laughs> yeah. um any any particular sort of grapplers that you're really excited to see in either tournament <laughs> yeah i mean like the list is uh, crazy long um you know cji being condensed into like plus and minus 
is very interesting. Um, I think there's a huge amount of like breadth within the weight classes. So, and the addition of wrestlers, like particularly wrestlers. And the rule set is also interesting because it's not an ADCC rule set. It's more like the combat karate grappling rule sets where it's going to be in the pits and it's going to be like rounds and all this stuff. And I think the rules are just now like finalized. Um, so rules have just been finalized a month before the competition is actually going to take place. So how much time does that give athletes to like acclimate and train within the rules, much less compete within them? Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see how people adapt to a new rule set in a new, even like mat type. So like the mats are going to be different. The rules are going to be different. Um, so like, and the addition of wrestlers without the ADCC format of like takedown centric um, is also going to be interesting to see how they perform. Um, like Nolf and Downey, like all those guys. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to watch how that tournament progresses. Um, but that being said, you know, ADCC is still a classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any thoughts on, uh, on, on Eva Brackett in CJI? Any, anybody you think is going to, you know, sort of take the, take the prize in Eva division? Man. I honestly, I think it's a toss up in all of them. Like I, I really am like very curious of, I don't even know the rules to be honest of the CGI. So I can't even say, cause like, I think they're just now getting finalized. So really like, it really depends on the rule set there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it really, really, really depends. Yeah. How do you think like someone like Nikki Rod, who's obviously a jujitsu guy, but uses a very kind of strong wrestling style of jiu-jitsu, does against some of the, the high-level wrestlers that have come in. I know it's going to depend a little bit on the rule set, but I think, you know, does he, does he, can he, can he hang with those guys, do you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely think he can hang with those guys. The one thing about, like, wrestling, and, like, we, we know, like, Nicky Rod has faced, like, Pat Downey in wrestling, and he lost. But then again, like, in wrestling, especially freestyle wrestling, you don't have to control your positions. So you can put someone, like catch them on a split second, get them in a bad way and capitalize and score. Where in jujitsu, you have to be a little bit more strategic about your scoring and show a higher level of control. And within that higher level of control, I think someone who has more experience in jujitsu will benefit. So like him training specifically jujitsu for so much longer than these wrestlers I think he's going to handle them fine. The amount of wrestling he knows on top of the specific jujitsu training he's had, like even if a wrestler takes him down, you know, will like, yeah, sure. Pin his shoulders to the mat. It doesn't really matter. He can lay flat on his back and butterfly sweep you. Like it, it's it kind of irrelevant. And a lot of those things that wrestlers are trained to do and the pressure they're taught to apply no longer serves a purpose. So they have to like learn new ways to like become victorious in the match. So I think that Nicky Ross is going to do just fine against like high level wrestlers. Yeah, and he's got to be a favorite, isn't he? I think. Yeah, I think so, mate. He's just <laughs> yeah. he's looking really. He's training really well at the moment. He's beating fucking pretty much everyone, and he it's yeah. He's a specimen yeah. as well, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> Fuck you know for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that body lock passing looks tough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my ribs hurt just watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uncomfortable when someone does it to you. I'm just like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've obviously got Owen Livesey in the uh, in the tournament, who's a uh, sort of judoka by background as well. But they obviously fought before, and though technically it was a draw, but I do think Nicky probably got the better of him in that match. And I think he's he's we, we we've met him, we've had him on the podcast again as well in person, and he's I think he's he's fairly small. I think for that for that bracket. Well, Owen, yeah, yeah, height wise, he's just fucking as wide as a fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like a Dorito, he's like a Dorito. through a door, mate. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's great, but I think um, who's uh, who's Angie's guy in there again? Hugo, Victor Hugo. Oh, Victor Hugo's fucking massive, isn't he? So I think he's yeah. he's yeah. definitely got to be uh, him and him and Nicky Rod maybe two favourites. Yeah, I think so. I think it's got to be in it and that, and then under eighties, it's Rotolos and fucking, you can't even look past them, can you? Yeah, I mean, that would be a very interesting match, The like Rotolo's in the finals. That, that'd be crazy. Um, 
I wonder if they would just put on a spectacle and split the mill. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I think yeah. they would, yeah. Yeah, I think they've said as much. I think they'll, they'll, they'll scrap. They'll scrap to the death and then just enjoy the, enjoy the cash for the family, I think. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be wicked. Max, really appreciate your time, mate. It's been awesome catching up and hearing your story. Um, is there anything you want to kind of finish with, mate? Do you uh, want to drop um, our audience maybe information on where to find you if they want to follow you and such? Yeah, so my handle on everything is one judoka, O N E J U D K A. Is that how you spell judoka? Anyways, <laughs> um, I can't think. I landed 1 a.m. last night. Um, been coming back from Tulsa. This crowd strike thing really got me messed up. All the flights in the U.S. went down. Did um, they? Yeah. But yeah, one judoka on everything. If you're looking to improve your no gi judo, hit me up. I got you. No, so you do the online stuff and, 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 and sort of instructional with that type of thing as well, mate? Yeah, yeah. So I have a Patreon with my instructionals and I'm uh, working on putting together a larger course um, to really, you know, help people integrate white to black belt in no gi judo. Yeah, nice. Perfect. We'll get the links uh, in the description below, mate. But again, really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate Cheers, it. Max. Awesome. Thank you, buddy.